All right, welcome back. I'm really not feeling it uh, tonight. I got a late start here, but I should be able to do uh, half an hour at the very least, 20 minutes, and uh, close out the chapter here. We've only got a few more pages left. We've got three more pages, so let's do that. The next section is log handling. Since this is a configured service with logging configuration, all STDOUT and STDERR is going directly into systemd. The handling works for free. No need to configure file-based logging, rotation, or even expiration. There are a few interesting and very nice features provided by systemd that allow you to interact with logs. I'm trying to pull up my lag here is why the reading is so staggered. Such as limiting the time range and filtering by unit or process ID. The command to interact with logs from a unit is done through the journal CTL command line tool. This process might be a surprise for expecting another subcommand from systemd to provide the logging helpers since we started the service and sent some requests to it via curl in the previous section. Let's see what the logs say. Okay, so we should be able to see what the logs... Oh, but you know what? I'm not sure if, if this is going to work. We'll try it, but... The previous section, I, I had a lot of difficulty getting things to work, so it might not work. Okay, but might be in luck tonight. That would be nice. Okay, while that's loading up, let's keep on reading. The dash u flag specifies the unit, which in this case is hello dash world, but you can also use a pattern or even specify multiple units. A common way to follow a log as it produces entries is to use the tail command Specifically, this looks like this. So I am very familiar with uh, using this command, um, but this would definitely be a huge uh, highlight if, if I weren't already familiar with it. The command to accomplish the same thing with journal CTL looks slightly different, but it works in the same way. Okay, so I will highlight this because uh, it's how to do it with journal CTL. If the systemd package is available with the PCRE2 engine, it allows you to use dash dash grep. This further filters out log entries based on a pattern. The dash f flag means to follow the log and it starts from the most recent entries and continues to show the entries as they happen, just like tail dash f would. In production, the number of logs may be too many and errors might have been showing up today. In those cases, you can use a combination of sincere dash dash since and dash dash until. Both these flags accept a few different types of parameters. Today, yesterday, three hours ago, one hour, 15 minutes, one hour, 35 minutes. In our small example, journal CTL is unable to find anything for the last 15 minutes. At the beginning of the output, it informs us of the range and produces the entries, if any. Okay, so we've got uh, more things. Okay, but that's the it. That's it. Um, so we're going to be doing the exercises and the case study. Um, that might take me into one more video because I want to really do those justice, but. Let's start by just running the commands. Okay, so I don't have this command. Let's see if I can apt get it install it.
Got to do an update first. Dead snakes. Oh my god, I wish this were um I wish this were going faster. There we go. Oh, we still don't have it. So J O U R N A L C T L. Don't have it. Um, we'll shoot. Oh, sweet. Okay, so I was able to get this to work now. I think I need to change directory. Yeah, I need to run it in this directory. Oh, but it is with a dash, not an underscore. Shoot. Well, you know what, it's not working, but I can run the command now, so let's just move on uh, to the next one. Ah, this isn't going to work either, because we don't even have that log file. Shoot. Okay, well, you know what, it doesn't work, that's fine. Let's just move on to the next exercise. Use three different commands to get log output from... System D using journal CTL so we can see the commands we can use here. Um, but we'll say that we've been done that. Explain what the work in directory configuration option is for in system D units so I can do that. That's uh, your uh, relative uh, directory when you use relative paths. It's relative to the directory specified in your work in directory configuration option. Okay, so why is a change log? important. It's important so that um, people know what changes are occurring. Um, let's see here. So let's, let's Google that and see if we can get a better answer. Yeah, to make it easier for users and contributors to see precisely what notable changes have been made between each release or version of the project. Perfect. Looks good to me. Okay, so uh, next one is what is a setup.py file for? We'll Google for that as well. So setup.py is a Python file, the presence of which is an indication that the model slash package you are about to install has likely been packaged and distributed with distutils, which is the standard for distributing Python modules. This allows you to easily install Python packages. So that's what a setup.py for is for more easily installing Python packages. Name three differences between Debian and RPM packages. So let's Google for that as well. Let's 
So dem files are meant for distributions of Linux that derive from Debian. The RPM files are primarily by dis distributions that derive from Red Hat based dis distros. So let's see what the difference is between the two. Yeah, so it's pretty much the same. I guess there's apt-git versus yum, that's the difference in how the packages are called. I'm sure there's also a difference in how they are meant, they are created, and there's a difference between the operating systems they're compatible with. So there's my three right there, let's move on. Okay, so the next is the case study. We're going to create a local instance of PyPy using DevPy. We're going to upload a Python package and then try to install that Python package from the local DevPy instance. So that's basically what we did there. I'm going to move my bookmark up. Okay, so we're going to create a local instance of PyPy. Okay, so here's the Debian repository. Um, you know what, let's do this. Let's um let's skip ahead to the bookmark again, which there's a bug, so I gotta go like that. Oh, uh, but with, I got to do that with that highlight. There we go. Okay, so then now let's do a search for DevPy. Okay, so we've got four searches. We've got searches ahead of my location and searches behind of my location. So let's do the ones behind. Okay, here we go. So this is DevPy. Let's make a new Okay, so this is hosting an internal package index. So let's do this. So let's see if we can get uh, devpy to start. Oh, unable to locate package. Okay, so we've got we've already got a pi pi folder. So we'll keep that and we'll add a new project. So we're going to say um, uh, Oh, okay. So that's to copy the tar gz. So we definitely we want the tar gz verse. Yeah, so we've got the tar GC here. Okay, so yeah, we need to uh Okay, so we're going to create a, a new project. We'll call it 
um, case study. So that's going to be just have my home directory. So make directory case study. I will do a, a dash. Then we'll change the directory into it. We'll do touch or make directory case study. Okay, and then touch init.py, touch main.py. Okay. All right, now we, we already got the virtual environment, so we can activate it. Oops, so it looks like I don't have, I don't have that, so let's try making it. Okay, so now I've got a VNV here called packaging. Okay, so we've got a some dependencies here. So we're gonna to need to pip install those dependencies. Okay. Next step is to package the files. So we need the, the setup file. Which I believe we already have created. We're just gonna need to go in and and uh, modify it. Oh uh, so I don't have it created already. So I wonder where this needs to go. Okay, setup is going to go up one.
Oh, I'm not able to. Oh, there we go. Alright, that looks good to me. Did I create a, a readme file? There we go. Getting there. Okay, so now we should have some extra files. Yep, so we've got the disk file, we've got the hello the yep, so everything looks, looks good. Alright, it's an installable package. So now we can upload it to Popeye for others to install. Gotta do a uh... oh, it's going to be called case study because I'm doing it custom here. There we go, and we installed it. Perfect. So I think the uh, example was was at calling for a bit more than that. Yeah, so we've got to upload it to uh, a repository. Um, Oh, so we got an error code. Let's try running the command anyway. Okay, so the command did install correctly. Sweet, okay, so, oh, we got a bad request though. Um, I didn't use a, a valid classifier. It looks like I forgot the M there, so let's fix that up and use a valid classifier. Alright, so we're going to need to go back and do some of the commands we just did. 
we'll need to do the okay so we've already got the all right so we need to do command three four one so we can do an exclamation point here and do three four one there we go And there you go. So now we can do we can try three, four, six again. Oh, we've still got a problem here. Let's take a look. So we've got an invalid URL. Um, HTTPS pipi.org slash L-A-G-A-C-Y so yeah uh, unfortunately I don't have oh you know what it's because fake uh, dot com is not a valid uh, value so let's just use the value that was given in the example here hopefully that's a valid value so they use example.com. Let's try that. Okay, so we've got an invalid value for home page. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what needs to go in there. Um, Okay, I don't know why I can't log in either because I just I just logged in. So you know what? Um, I might just have to skip the case study and just kind of hang my hat and say I couldn't get the case study to work. I'm sure if I struggled with it enough, I would get it to work. But this isn't something that I think is is that all that crucial. So. Um, this is something I couldn't get to work the first time around either. So let's jump ahead to the bookmark. There we go, we'll go back one. So the case study was to create a local instance of PyPy using DevPy, upload a Python package, and then try to install that Python package from the local DevPy instance okay so I guess we could have done that because we're trying to do a remote um, instance oh you know what I think we did it um, yeah so we just need to do Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah. So to create a local instance, we're just gonna run the run that. So we'll do a screen, and then we'll run the server. There you go. And then we'll detach the screen. Okay, and now we should we should be able to get it to work. I'm going to do a deactivate. There we go, and then a Python three dash m v n v p local pi. and then source.
and then we'll do case study. Oops, so I think we've got to be in the right directory for that. Oops, still got another problem here. I'll try the dash H that they recommend there. It doesn't work. Oh, perfect, okay. Yeah, so now that I've got the, I specified the correct file, uh, we ran a setup for it and we successfully installed it. So that's it, I, I did the, because uh, if we go back to the instructions, it says to create a local instance of PyPy, Upload a Python package and then try to install the Python package from the local devpy instance. I did it. I successfully did it. I think. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's going to be the end of chapter 5. I'll see you in the next video where I begin chapter 6, continuous integration and continuous deployment.